Okay, that soundtrack was absolutely fire. <laughs> I've seen Lord Slug probably the least out of all of the old ones. This may be the only my third or fourth time overall. I think I saw it on TV once, but then the DVD was super rare when I was a kid and it was hard to find. And then they only released it in this collection set when I already had all the other ones and I didn't have as much money as a kid, so I didn't buy it. And luckily they re-released everything on Blu-ray and it, stuff's easier to find out with the internet. But the point being, each time I see things new and hardly remember some of the details, by and large, that's because the film, after its first act, becomes fairly forgettable and formulaic. What's not forgettable is the false Super Saiyan, or what's known as the pseudo Super Saiyan, we call it a false Super Saiyan, which makes absolutely no sense. I get that at the time, that's what it was intended to be, the Super Saiyan form, only to be retconned later. And it's an interesting idea, but the film does nothing with it. It never pops up in canon again, maybe hinted at, so it ends up being confusing. You have to read other material to find out that it's not actually that, and it just feels kind of like a lazy attempt to do something and that Toriyama didn't properly communicate to the film team. And it makes placing this canon really hard, but we'll get into that later. The henchmen here are fine, and get the absolute business handed to them by Piccolo and Goku. And Gohan really steps up here. Lord Slug himself gets points, for originality as a super namek and wishing for eternal youth and succeeding in that. Even though Piccolo turns big in the original Dragon Ball show, I believe. But I guess this is different. His army was cool, as was the first few minutes when DBZ went from disaster movie to alien invasion movie and was doing all these cool things. Goku and Krillin couldn't stop the comet and got sucked away. I almost wish it had been more of that. And then it just turned into typical DBZ. I don't know how they would have restructured it, but it was really cool in those first few moments. Again, after that opening act that's so interesting and unique, it just hits all the same beats. And when something interesting shows up, it gets glossed over. Piccolo getting to save the day in a way is kind of cool and refreshing, but the power scaling feels off given when it's supposed to take place. Most of that's wasted in the form of a bare bones plot, no characterization or nuance, and a really poor script from Funimation. Slug gives some of the worst of one-liners I've heard in the series. I'd be curious to actually check out the Japanese version here to compare. However, you lose that insanely good soundtrack that really pulls the film together and keeps things engaging. As far as continuity goes, this really just solidifies that movies two through four, so uh, World's Strongest, Tree of Might, Lord Slug, are impossible to place within the main timeline. We have the dream theories, we have the android theories. You know, World's Strongest shows Gohan in its post Saiyan Saga appearance, a Tree of Might has too many characters present. You could theoretically squeeze them in the three year android gap, but the believability that Goku has just decided not to go Super Saiyan is super thin, especially when this one references Tree of Might and the false Super Saiyan thing happens. In the end credits, Goku's driving, and that happens a good bit after Frieza when they gets his license where he goes Super Saiyan. My brain hurts. They're in a weird canon place in Xenoverse 2, the game, was smart to relegate them to an alternate timeline where somehow they fit. Back to my dream theory, maybe Goku also dreams of this during his recovery on Namek. Maybe it's more leakage from alternate dimensions or Mira's antics. Or he could have dreamed this one while on, while on Namek and in my Tree of Might review I mentioned that he would have dreamed that at the same time. But that could also work to, he could have dreamed that on the way to Namek as his way to deal with learning about the Saiyans uh, while he's in the spaceship training at 50 times gravity. So really there's multiple places that these dream theories can work. All in all, it's fun and cool at times, and I was engaged plenty, but it's sloppier than previous efforts. I give Dragon Ball Z, Lord Slug, three and a half out of five stars. Seriously, I cannot tell you enough how those soundtracks just take me back and help me to always look for the good.